Hello. My name is Tom, and I'd like to introduce our game, Solas. Solas is a synthwave-infused puzzle game about directing pulses of light through a dark and damaged landscape. The once ordered world has been attacked by a chaotic external force, and players are tasked with exploring this strange machine of neon clockwork in the hopes of fixing it. Myself, Jamesy and Stephen have been working on this game for about a year at this point, and we're excited to show it to you. Over the next five or so minutes, I'll go over some of the features that we think make Solas special. It all starts here, with these simple mirrors. At its heart, Solas is a beam deflection game, with the puzzles built around directing light. At its most basic level, mirrors can either be rotated or moved to help the player connect the light source to a receiver. If they manage to restore this link, the receiver will unlock. This then becomes a door, allowing the player to change screen, but also becomes the source for the next puzzle. In fact, every single screen of Solas is being simulated behind the scenes at all times. Every pulse is moving, whether or not you can see it allowing us to do some interesting things that we'll get back to later. One of the interesting features of Solas is that the beams are not continuous. While you are attempting to make unbroken connections from a light source to a receiver, the beam is actually composed of discrete pulses. These pulses are what matters, as these pulses can and often will collide with each other. In certain puzzles, this can block the most obvious solution. Knowing when to cause collisions and when to avoid them is vital for progress. Here we see that the world of Solas is under attack. Something strange and alien has invaded and is wreaking havoc. It is up to the player to figure out how to fix the damage that is being done and how to reconnect the pulse streams. In this puzzle, however, we can see that colliding pulses is not always a hindrance. In fact, sometimes this is vital to progress. We need to make yellow pulses in this room and also don't have enough mirrors to get to the receiver. Collide the pulses in the right location, however. This also shows one of the core design aspects of Solas, that of additive glyphs. Put simply, there are three shapes that are used to represent the three primary colors. When we merge the colors, we also merge the shapes, so that the game can be played whether you can perceive color or not. We've skipped forwards a little again to show another unique feature of Solas. So far, all the puzzles have always been contained in a single screen. As I mentioned earlier, however, everything is always being simulated behind the scenes, so while our view might be locked to discrete screens, the game itself is not. Take this puzzle. How can we make white with only a yellow pulse? The only place to put these mirrors is where we'd normally expect a wall. Let's put them there and see what happens. Ah, the mirrors are now available to use in an entirely different screen. As I continue to solve this puzzle, you will see that we required those mirrors to be moved, and we end up going to four different screens in order to solve the original puzzle. These multi-screen puzzles become both more common and more complicated as players delve deeper into the world of Solas. This is the central hub the players will reach a few hours into the game. From this point on, they are given a choice about where to explore next, and more complicated pieces and mechanics are revealed to the players. 
We'll take a look at a couple of them in a moment. Before that, however, I wanted to show you the map. This is uncovered as players explore and allows them to fast travel between different rooms. While this might not seem important initially, later on it will become vital to navigating some of the more complicated puzzles. Up until now, we've only been able to merge colours together. From this point on, however, pieces are revealed that will allow players to split the colours back into their primary components. These pieces start off simple to understand, but have their own unique rules embedded in them, which the players will need to learn to understand and use to their advantage. While the puzzles start out simple, later on they will become much more complicated, like this one. This is also a good time to highlight another feature we've added for people with visual processing issues. At any point, players can click this button and highlight all the pieces they can interact with. The final, and perhaps most unique piece I want to show you today is the filter. Filters start off simple. They remove a colour from a pulse that passes through it. Here you can see that primary colours are being removed from a white pulse. What makes filters unique, however, is that they are not single components. Instead, they are beams which interact with the world around them and can be manipulated by the player. Here you can see that they can also be blocked and redirected by pieces we've used before to alter the pulses. They also work under a subtly different set of rules to the pulses, so players will need to learn how to interact with these filters and the pulses in combination to solve later puzzles. Thank you so much for listening, and I really hope you enjoy Solos.